Well, I think what I'd like to uh, start out with today was, I don't think the last time I really got a good idea of what it was like to live here at Rinalda when you first moved here. What year was that? Now, you're going to have to hold up. Okay, I'm sorry. I wanted to get an idea of what it was like to live here at Rinalda, to, to live on the place and work here. Well, it was more like a family. Uh-huh. It, it was all, well, it's just a lovely place to work. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I guess about as lovely place as you would ever want. Uh-huh. You didn't have any inc inclination to leave? Oh, no. Not as long as they <laughs> kept me. Uh-huh. What, what kinds of things would you do after work, after your work was over? Well, I, uh, at that time, the lake out here was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed fishing. Mm -hmm. And I'd go out there in the afternoons, evenings, after I'd get off from work, fish. Uh -huh take the children out there. Uh -huh. There was a float out at the boathouse. Uh -huh. It's just a good place to relax. Uh -huh. Would other people that lived on the place take their families out there too? Not too many. Uh -huh. Not too many, because they didn't, they didn't have no children like I did. Right. Did you ever do anything with the um, the men that lived here, the did, other men? Did I have the what? Did you ever do anything with the other men that worked here, like fish with them or? Oh yeah, we visited one another. Uh huh. Passed the hello. And uh huh. Who who would this be? These who 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 were these people that lived here that were your friends? Well the. Plumber, uh -huh. he lived here. Mm -hmm. The landscape man lived here. Mm -hmm. The superintendent lived here. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the electricians, of course, that was me. And the poultry man, they all lived here. Uh -huh. Did did you men folk ever go out and do things? Well. They had a ball team here, uh -huh. and uh, some of them played golf. I never did play golf. Uh -huh. Some of them played golf up above the, that was a golf course up there. Up there, there. in the house? Mm -hmm. There above the house? Yeah. And uh, they had a ball team here. I never did play ball with them. And uh, polo. Polo? Mm hmm They had a polo team here, uh -huh. kept the horses over here where the species school is now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This was all why you were here? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So was this while the Babcocks were here or before they came? Oh, before they came, that, uh -huh. that before they came. Uh-huh. Who was sponsoring the ball team? Uh, Ms. Ronalds. And then after she died, uh, Renola sponsored it for a couple of years, and then it dissolved. Uh huh. Kind of fell away mm -hmm. like everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, why didn't you ever go out for the sports? Well, I, I was, uh, you know, I I like baseball. Uh -huh. I never did care anything about the polo. Uh huh. And I didn't care anything about golf. Uh -huh. But uh, I enjoyed fishing and hunting. I had about four hound dogs, uh -huh. beagles. And when I wasn't fishing, I was hunting. <laughs> <laughs> would other men go with you hunting or with your boys? Or? Some of them would and some of them wouldn't. Uh -huh. Other words, some of them had their, their favorite sports, uh -huh. just like I did. Did you ever go watch any of the games? I went, I'd go to the ball game sometime. Uh-huh. They ever try to persuade you to join? <laughs> no. 
because uh, I was I was on a ball team up home. Uh huh. Old uh-huh. Richmond. But after I moved here, I got went to work down here. I sort of got broke away from that team, mm-hmm. and I, like anything else, I, I sort of lost interest in it, and I didn't pay too much attention to it. Uh-huh. It didn't last too long here after she died, no way. Right. Well, tell me about your ball team up home. Well, it was just a country ball team. Uh-huh. At that time, there was little pro balls played around. I played some up there. Uh-huh. Who sponsored the team? Up there, uh-huh. just a neighborhood. Uh-huh. They take up collection and uh-huh. for, buy balls and bats. And uh-huh. Didn't didn't have a half a dozen uniforms. <laughs> I bet not. Blue jeans, uh-huh. <laughs> mostly. How did y'all do? How? We had a pretty good team. We had a. We had two players eventually went up, well, they went to playing with the twins down here first. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they went up to New York. And they stayed up there a couple of years. Uh-huh. And they couldn't make it. And they come back. What team did they One of them, that, that was team up home, old Richmond. Right. One what? of them was a pitcher and the other one was out feeling. Y'all must have been good then. Well, we had a pretty good ball team. Uh-huh. Renola had a pretty good ball team. Uh-huh. What, uh, what kinds of other teams would they play? Where would the teams be from? Oh, it's just uh, different schools at that time around, you know, sort of like the, sort of like the uh, college teams is now. Ah. Except it was high school. They would play other high school teams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did did any of the industries around have ball teams at that time? Yeah, yeah. Haynes Knitting Company. Uh-huh. They had a sponsor the ball team, and Ronald Spike Company sponsored the ball team. And I don't know. There's some others. Uh-huh. I don't remember call now. But back then, manufacturers were sort of like schools. They'd have a recreation because the city didn't have recreation facilities like they got now you know swimming uh-huh. pools and ball diamonds and tennis courts and uh-huh. all that the, the city did uh, the county you one didn't have that right yeah and it was up to individual schools or neighborhoods to do what they could uh-huh well that's so neat did the women have anything like that any kind of organization? They, they had basketball. Uh-huh. Uh, Haynes Knitting Company had a, a basketball, girls basketball team went to, oh, they won, I don't know how many trophies. Huh. Did the women here at Ronalda have anything? No, I don't think, no, Ronalda didn't have any basketball game. What would the the women that lived here on Ronalda do? Like, your wife didn't work, did she? No. Uh-uh. What would she spend her day doing? Well, when I moved here, she got flea bodies. She uh-huh. had flea bodies when I moved here, and she was practically an android for eighteen years. Uh-huh. But there wasn't many of the women lived here. The lady that lived in this house was a stenographer. Stenographer? Up to the main office. Was that Blanche Gunn? No, no. Blanche Gunn lived across the road. Uh-huh. Miss Nelson lived here. Uh-huh. And then uh, Miss Fry that lived right across the road here uh-huh. was a uh, she wasn't a postmaster when I moved here, but she'd become a postmaster. Uh-huh. See, we had a post office up there. Uh-huh. 
And then the other ladies, they didn't have to work. <laughs> Their husbands worked. <laughs> do you know what they would do? Ma'am? Like, did they ever have any clubs or anything like that? Oh, I think they had some uh, bridge clubs or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. This would be the women? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Was your wife ever asked to join anything? N no. Not that I know of. Uh -huh. I don't recall. Uh -huh. Who would care for your wife during the day? Uh, you know that this five row. Now you had. Uh -huh. You know what that was. Uh -huh. There's a lot of colored women down there, uh -huh. and I had a colored lady to come up and do the housework. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What was her name? Well, I had two or three. Uh-huh. Harvard mother hoped me some. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Can you remember the names of the other two? Well, one of them was a, a Bailey girl. Sis Bailey, they called her. Sis Bailey. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember the others now because... Uh, they would work a while and then they'd want to lay off, you know, and you'd have to get another one. <laughs> would they just stop working or would they go somewhere else? Or no, what? they'd just stop. Uh -huh. just... But I was very fortunate. They all lived right out in here close, you know. Uh-huh. What kind of things would they they do for you? Hmm? What kinds of things would they do for you? Well, they you? just kept house for me. Uh-huh. They sort of helped, did they help your wife any with? Well, she wasn't exactly an invalid, uh -huh. but her flea, her flea body settled in her leg. Uh -huh. And uh, she would had to go on crutches or rolling chairs. Uh -huh. It would go and come, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen the time when your quarter dropped between this leader here and that bone. Oh, my goodness. Through her leg, uh -huh. ankle. Did you have to do any special care for it? Had to do what? Did you have to do anything special to care for it? Uh, not at home. Uh huh. Now, if it get real bad, it had to carry to the hospital for maybe a couple of weeks. Uh huh. And they'd patch it up and dry it up. And uh huh. They'd come right back. Uh huh. Did they have to drain it or anything like that? Yeah, and scrape it out. Ooh. So that must have been real hard um, on you and her both. It sure was. Uh -huh. Did, how old were your children um, when you first moved here? Well, they were from from 16 on down to a baby. And down to a baby. Uh -huh. What did they think about moving from up in Tobaccoville here to Ramolda. Well, they they didn't know anything about Ramolda, you know. They, uh huh. It was sort of a oh, they were sort of excited about it. Uh huh. Can you remember some of their reactions when you first came in? No. Uh, they adjusted to it pretty good. Uh huh. What did, uh, I guess the oldest one, did she, did, I don't remember if it's a she or he. The, the, the oldest one was a boy. Uh -huh. Did he start going to high school? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, he got a job here. And in the weekends, he would caddy up here for the golf course. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did he... Did he feel like he was something working out here at Ronaldo? Oh, yeah. You know, first paycheck he got, he thought he was rich. <laughs> <laughs> had he had any opportunities to earn money before this uh -uh. time? Oh, he'd work around up there for the neighbors. Uh -huh. Never get, got anything for it. Right. Uh -huh. Would he work after school? 
and when he got out of school? Or uh, sometimes just what season it was, you see. Uh -huh. Now, uh, and it's early spring before school was out. Mm -hmm. If they were making hay, mm -hmm. when he'd get home, he's a water boy. Uh -huh. He'd carry water in the evenings. Nothing mm -hmm. regular, just just going what they was doing, you know. Right. So when, did he go, did he finish high school? Yeah. Uh -huh. what Finished did he, high school and went and joined the Marines. Uh-huh. And stayed in the Marines 14 years. Uh-huh. Gosh. My father was a Marine. Yeah. Uh -huh. My youngest boy, he joined the Air Corps. And, uh, before he finished high school, and he went to Italy. Uh -huh. I think he stayed about three years in the Air Corps. Mm -hmm. He came back, finished mm -hmm. high school, and went to work for American Airlines. Huh. And when Pete Mon opened up here, he came back here and he's been with them ever since. Uh -huh. What does he do for them? He's a head mechanic of all the planes. Did you, um, what was your first reaction when he quit high school to go join the Air Force? Well, at that time, you know, we were in deep war. Oh. And we decided, that we had to sign for him, but we decided if that's what he wanted. Uh -huh. And we just went down and signed him in. Uh-huh. What happened to your other children? How, uh, what? Can you tell me what happened? Like you had five children? I had six. Six. Can you tell me what happened to the four in between? Well, the those rest two? of them got married. Long. <laughs> uh huh. Were they girls? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. I just had two boys. Right. Did the girls finish high school? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. They all finished high school. Uh huh. What, what did their husbands do? Well, one of them. The oldest girl's husband works for the oldest elevator company in Florida. Oh, that's right. And uh, next one works for the Kennedy Center over on the elevators over oh, Kennedy. You know where they sent right. up the rockets. Right, right. Uh huh. He he's the elevator man over Kate there. Kennedy. And one of my daughters, husband, works for Reynolds Bar Company in a power plant. Uh -huh. And uh, one of them is an administrator over here at Amos Cottage. You know Amos Cottage? Uh -huh. Well, it's retarded children. Oh, okay. And uh, that's all, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's got them. <laughs> they scattered out everywhere. Right, right. How often do you get to see them now? Oh, the ones in Florida and Georgia, probably over two years. Uh huh. But this past July the 12th, I had an 80th birthday. Uh huh. And all of them was here. All the grandchildren and great grandchildren. Oh gosh, that's something. That's it. Now, where did you to put them all? <laughs> to be scattered out like they were, uh -huh. to, for them all to be here at one time. Uh -huh. Where did you put them all? Well, got around <laughs> different places. <laughs> oh gosh, would when they were growing up here at Ronaldo, would they bring their friends over? The what? Would when they when your children were growing up here at Ronalda, would they bring their friends over? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. From high school. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. What did their friends think of Ronalda? Be what? What did their friends think of Ronalda? Well, they just not too much. 
In other words, if you're here all the time, you don't think nothing about it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We wonder sometimes how come so many people going through here looking. <laughs> but uh -huh. I see it because when we go off, we, we're looking for something different. Uh -huh. And when people are traveling through here, they appreciate it. Uh -huh. But if you live here all the time, it, it gets a monopoly. It, 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 it's just the same thing. Yeah, same uh -huh. thing. You don't care nothing about it. <laughs> but other people coming through, like uh, from from downtown Winston, that don't live at a nice place like this, they I guess they would think you lived in a pretty good place. Well, yeah, like if you go to Florida or, or most anywhere, you know. Uh huh. If you've never been there before and it's a nice place, where well, you enjoy it. Uh huh. Did did you have other friends who were electricians in other places in Winston? Oh yeah, I had friends, electricians that I used to work with before I came out here. Right. Did they think you had a pretty good job? Oh yeah, they were. Were they a little bit envious of you? Some of them might have been. <laughs> Of course, they were making more money than I was. Mm -hmm. But they still... I wanted to ask you um, if, if when they were running the garden over here and the vegetable garden, did you ever buy vegetables or get vegetables from up here? Mm -mm. Uh -huh. No. Sometimes I get some, uh -huh. but I never did buy them. <laughs> What kinds would you get? Ma'am? Yeah. What would you get from... Well, just whatever in season, maybe a uh -huh. couple of cucumbers. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Would they ever sell those vegetables, too? I never know them to sell any. Uh-huh. They might have sold some. I don't know. I never did know them. You had a, did you have a, all the years you were living here, did you have a vegetable garden? Yeah, I had a vegetable garden over here where the vineyard was. Uh-huh. Across the lake. Right. Did, did you ever get any seeds or anything like that off the place? Like, would they ever furnish you any seeds or anything? Seeds? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You had to buy your own? Well, I... When I wanted something, I was just going to buy it. I didn't. Uh -huh. They had plenty up there, but I wasn't the type of person to go begging for something. Uh huh. But did some people get seeds and stuff? I don't from? know. In fact, there wasn't. There wasn't but two of us had a garden. The rest of them. The rest of them didn't have no garden. Uh -huh. You and who else had garden? Me and Sam Whitty had one. Sam Whitty? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He was a, worked on the farm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Where did he live? He lived back up here where the parking center, uh, where the shopping center is now on Cherry Street. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, the golf course runs up to the shopping center and those right. apartments. Right, There was a, some houses up there and he lived up there and he had a garden. Uh-huh. Is that where the white people that worked on the farm lived? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, the white people lived up there too. Uh-huh. And the black people that lived on, that worked now, on the farm lived at Five Rose. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Did any of the farm people live down in this section of the, um, village? No, no. They all lived up there? No. The farm superintendent lived across the road. Uh-huh. That was, um... And the dairy man lived across the road. Right. So, it's like, the head men lived down here. And mm -hmm. the people that just worked on the farm yeah. lived up there. Uh -huh. 
only two people had gardens. Yeah. And only two people had gardens. Yeah. That's pretty unbelievable. I would have. Well, now the colored people, they had gardens down here on Fire Road. Right. I had talked to Al Wharton, and that's what he mm -hmm. had told me. Yeah, they had holes and gardens and everything down there. Uh -huh. Did they still keep hogs here on the farm? Yeah, mm -hmm. at that time they did. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a question. I know that it's hard for you to remember, but did you know why that they wouldn't keep up the dairy cows uh, when you were telling me about mm -hmm. how how they didn't strip them and mm -hmm. they just went dry. Do you know why that happened? Yeah, I knew why. Well, because they didn't tend to them. Uh huh. They, they, just, they just used the milking machines, and as soon as the milking machines got through, they just take them off and let the cow go. Uh huh. Was it spite or ignorance? The ignorance. Or ignorance? Uh, all I want to say, ignorance, uh -huh. is more dilatory, I'd say. Didn't care. Didn't care? Uh-huh. See, the boys the, just had a bunch of young boys, uh -huh. and they didn't care. Uh -huh. And the superintendent, he... He didn't look he at didn't, them. He didn't look at them, that's uh -huh. right. So it's just easier. <laughs> yeah. It's less work to just let them go. I was told that there used to be an artesian well here. Oh yeah, There's three of them, I think, three, either three or five. Uh huh. That's where we got all our water. Uh huh. All when, of our drinking water. Right. Where Where were they located? Up. Up at the head of the golf course up here. At the head of the golf course. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Why did they stop using them? Uh, that's what I don't know. <laughs> they claim it wasn't pure. Who was this? Nick Bragg. He had it tested. Uh-huh. I, I fit that as long as I could because it was good water. Uh-huh. I had it tested every year and never did show up nothing to them. I like it a whole lot better than I do this city water. I bet. But we had three water systems here. Huh. Tell me about those. Those artesian wells. Uh-huh. That water came down to a storage tank back of the swimming pool. Right. Never got on top of the ground nowhere. It's all under the ground. Out of that storage tank, we had a pump house. Uh-huh. And that would keep the pressure on it, you know. Right. That was for the drinking water around on the place, across the road and everywhere. Even at, at the big house too? Yeah, everywhere. Uh-huh. Then we had another system that down at the old swimming pool that pumped water over here at the steam plant through filters, heated it, and went back and fed hot water to all the village. Huh. And this would be the water that was had come out of the pool. Yeah. This this is the water, surface water coming from those artesian wells up there. Right. Uh huh. That pumped down here for the hot water. Uh huh. Then we had another system. Pump house on the lake, pump water up on the corner of the Nolan Coliseum Drive. That water tank. I don't know whether you know it's a big cement building there or not. This is at the corner of Ronaldo Road and... Coliseum Drive. I'll have to look for that. That's a water tank. We'd pump water out of the lake up there and let it come back for gravity for the air condition. Huh. We had three water systems here. Boy, now that's real elaborate and real conservative, you know, conserving water. Yeah. We had plenty of water. Uh -huh. So that was set up like that when you came? Yeah. That's that, really something. I guess Catherine That Reynolds was set up in 1915, 16 when this place was laid out. Uh-huh. Huh. And 
did they just stop using all those things mm -hmm. at one time? The lake got so full of water, I mean so full of mud, right. we couldn't pump water out of it anymore, to, up yonder. We had to do away with that. Mm -hmm. Then, when we were done away with the steam plant down here, mm -hmm. we had to do away with the hot water lines. That left only the artesian wells, uh -huh. and uh, he decided, oh, I don't know, maybe probably four or five years ago, he's going to put that on the city water, and that's what he did. Hmm. That's too bad. It is. I hate to see him do it, but I, I've talked, talked him out of it, but he wouldn't listen. <laughs> Why did they stop using the steam plant? Why? Uh-huh. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And then done away with the tunnel, too. The tunnel? Mm-hmm. There's a tunnel going to run from here up to the green, well, to the main office. Uh-huh. And it's tees off right here and goes across to the front of the church. Underneath the ground? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's about seven foot tall and about Oh, seven foot wide, I reckon. Gosh, I didn't know all that was underneath there. Oh, yeah. Everything was on the ground. Uh-huh. And these would be the pipes running from the steam plant? Yeah. Yeah. Why did they do away with that? Just at the same time they did away with the steam plant? I, I'll tell you the truth, I don't know why they did it. I know why they did it done away with the steam plant, because it's costing too much money. It cost around twenty thousand dollars a year to operate. Ooh. They were having to buy their own coal and everything, I guess. Mm -hmm. Were they having to buy their own coal and yeah, things like that to heat the steam? They, they, for several years before they done away with it, they converted over to oil. They used oil instead of coal. I could see how that could run in the money. But when I came here, there wasn't a foot of water overhead nowhere. Telephone, or electric. Uh -huh. Everything was on the ground. How did that make your job? How did that make your job? Did it make it easier or make it harder? Or? Well, it made it easier after they took everything out of the tunnel. Uh-huh. Put it overhead. I wasn't responsible for it overhead, you know, Duke Power Company was, but I was responsible for everything after it left an old road out here. Right, when you first came mm -hmm. here? That's a big responsibility. It was, when I came here it was. Uh-huh. How would your, back then, when you were doing all that, how would your day start? What was... How was what? How, how did your working day start in the morning? What would you do when you first got up? And it didn't start or it didn't stop. <laughs> of course, when it didn't have no emergency or no trouble or nothing, I went to work around 8 o'clock. Uh -huh. And uh, I always found something to do uh -huh. till about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh -huh. But if a storm, storm came up, that night or something. There wasn't no quitting time. Right. What would you have to do in a situation like that? Well, if the lightning knocked out the oil switches somewhere, had different places along, you know, mm -hmm. I'd have to go and put them back in. Mm -hmm. Would this, would you have to, I don't know a whole lot about electricity or anything. Would you have to dig in the ground to Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometime. When would you have to? Wait? Not too much electricity, as much as you would plumbing stuff. Oh. Uh huh. Because all, all the plumbing was on the ground too. Mm -hmm. And sewer line would get stopped up, or a water line leak, you'd have to dig it out. Uh huh. But the electric. From the tunnel end of that house and end of this house and end of all the houses was in conduit, you know. Uh -huh. And if something went wrong, all you had to do was pull the old line out and pull in new. You didn't have to dig it up. Right. Uh 
Uh-huh. You could almost reach it, I guess. Well, you, it'd be close enough to where you could pull it out. Do you remember any um, real bad um, breakdowns here? The, no. Do you remember the worst one you ever had? No, no, no more than just an ordinary breakdown, you know. Uh-huh. I never did have much trouble except lightning. Uh-huh. Now, how exactly would lightning hurt? Well, anything on the ground, like lead cable. Lightning can hit up here, say, to, say towards Polo Road. Right. It won't necessarily hit down here, but the surge on that cable keeps building up. The further it goes, the higher it gets. And if it's come up very much of a storm, on the end of the lines, it will knock the switch out. Because it, that surge would just keep getting higher and higher. Uh -huh. That'd be the only trouble I'd have. So then you'd have to go replace the switches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the problem the other night when we got our power knocked out up here? About a week or so ago, we were at about one night. Yeah, for about ten hours. What mm -hmm. happened then? Try, I think a transformer burned out. Uh-huh. That was at the power station? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you've seen stations around where there's a bank of transformers. Uh-huh. There's one up here on Polar Road. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's one up here on Polar Road. Uh-huh. And when it's knocked out, you got an automatic switch up there. And if Liam falls on these two lines and knocks it out, if it if it knocks this limb off, it'll come back on in about a minute. Uh huh. But if that limb stays on there, it'll go off again. It'll do that about three times, and if that stays on there, it'll, it, this switch will stay out then until they come and put it back in. And that, then get that limb off wherever it's at. Uh huh. That's what that is. And that's what happened. Mm hmm. Well, I remember before that it happened that we'd get power surges like mm -hmm. the power would cut off and then come back on yeah, and that's that, what was going on that's what was doing it huh. yeah. so i guess y'all were without power down here too weren't you oh yeah in a situation like that you don't have to do anything mm -mm. no that's new power company uh-huh did did you, did you call in or anything do you still keep up with like what's going on the electrical yeah, work if, uh, if it goes off out here in a length of time I'll call them uh huh and you'll ask them do you ask them if there's anything you can do or anything like no, that no I don't ask them if there's anything I can do <laughs> I just report it to them uh huh so I, I, I guess it's Duke Power does everything out here now I guess. yeah they do now uh -huh. yeah telephone company does too but I used to have to keep all that up. <clears throat> uh -huh. When did your uh, when did you have when did you stop? When did Duke Power and I guess it's Bell Telephone take over that all that stuff? Finally. I just don't know. Uh -huh. Was it somewhere around? I'd say sixty-five. I reckon. Uh -huh. 65 or somewhere along there. I wouldn't be sure about that. Because uh -huh. time get, make, gets me mixed up. Right. Gets me mixed up, and I'm not even happy, right? Um, did, was this before you retired or after? Oh, yeah. It, it, this was before I retired. Uh huh. I'd say it's about, oh, I, I don't know. How did you feel about that, about them coming in and... Uh, oh, I just sued me all right. <laughs> Relieve me. Why is I that? I think that's what they were working at anyway. Uh-huh. Because they knew I was going to retire in 65. Uh-huh. And they preparing for it. 
Uh huh. So you were relieved? Yeah, I was relieved. Uh huh. Because that was a big responsibility. Right. You, you didn't feel free no time. Uh huh. If you went off in a hurry, you were all the time wondering what was happening back here, you know. Right. And no, no one else knew anything about it. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't feel like you could go off on a vacation mm -mm. without any worries. I used to when I was going off. I wouldn't let anybody know anything about it because every time I planned and told it, uh -huh. something would happen. Oh no. So who would you uh, who would you tell? Shoot, shooting tenant. Uh huh. Mr. Warrington. Uh huh. What you tell him when you go off? Mm hmm. Uh huh. <coughs> Did you have to ask off? No. No, I didn't. Felt free to. Mm hmm. You felt free to go off. I wanted to um, ask you, let's see, I'm about to run out of tape here, maybe I can get it in. I wanted to ask you, were you included in Mr. Babcock's will? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What, when, when, when was it that he died? Don't ask me that. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't tell you. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I just don't know. Did he include a lot of the people that worked here? Did he include them all? Uh huh. I don't know about. I don't know about that. Uh huh. I don't know how many he included. Uh huh. What did you think of, uh, about that? Well, I thought it was nice of him. Uh huh. They both included me in their will. Uh huh. Ms. Belcock and him both. Uh huh. But I deserved it. Uh huh. I'd, I'd work long hours. I've been, I went up at that house on a lot of occasions, seven o'clock this morning, and stay up there till I saw the sun come up in the morning. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah. When, what kind of occasions would this be? Weddings. Weddings? And big parties, dances. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've done that several times. Did you recall any of the weddings, what they were like? Oh, they were, they were out of this world. Uh-huh. What would they, can you describe them for me? I've oh, never been to a big wedding like that. Well, it, the wedding part was like all of them. Uh-huh. There's such a mob there. Uh-huh. What would be different? The
think we were talking about, I might not have gotten in the part about the weddings that they'd have up there. Who would be getting married? Mary Catherine. Uh-huh. Betsy. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that was on two weddings. So what would the re where would they have the reception? Uh, you know that little sunken dog garden out in front of the house. Uh huh. Uh, he had a tent that covered that whole thing. Really? Huh. And had the cake and, and all that out there. Uh huh. And they had about five or six bars that uh. Uh huh. Most anywhere you went, you saw a bar. <laughs> Uh-huh. Gosh, I had never heard of them having a big canopy. Why did they put the canopy up or the big tent? Well, in case of rain or something. Uh -huh. And then uh, it kept the sun to shine out, you see. Right. So would they have the weddings in, during the day? or mm -hmm. uh -huh. Late afternoon or something. Uh-huh. And the reception would last all night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Where would they have uh, parties there? Where? Uh -huh. They'd have them up there. Out in the same place? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Where would you be during these times? Be what? Where would you be stationed during these times? Well, I'd make round, see if everything was working. But me and the plumber had our headquarters, you might call it, down at the basement door. Uh huh. That's where we stayed when we wasn't occupied. <laughs> what kinds of things would you have to do if, when they would call you? To do well, something? whatever. Sometimes they'd put in too many lights, or sometimes they'd short out something uh -huh. and blow a light. Mm -hmm. What would y'all do when you were sitting down in the room, you and the plumber? Well, How would you spend the time? Drinking champagne. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's neat. Did you play cards or anything like that? No. Just sat and talked? Mm -hmm. did, you, did they bring you some of the party food, too? Well, we, we were going to go around. They prepared the food downstairs in the kitchen. Right. They had a cadence man from Richmond, Virginia. Uh-huh. And he came in here like the wedding's going to be this afternoon. He'd come in here this morning early uh -huh. with two or three big trucks. Uh -huh. And he'd be just like bees working. Uh-huh. Every, every man knew his job. Uh-huh. And he'd prepare and that's food. This would be the caterer's own men, the man who brought the food down and would bring his own people with mm -hmm. him? Yeah. yeah, he'd bring them all. Did some of the help at the house, were they there too? Yeah. Helping? Uh -huh. They might have been getting in the way, I guess, <laughs> those people were. Well, they were. Uh -huh. they... What kind of food would they have? Oh. All kind. Uh huh. All kinds of food. Did you taste anything you'd never tasted before? Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I was just thinking. I didn't eat. I, I didn't eat some too much. That, that it's more for the looks, you know. And right. The name. <laughs> they wasted more food than they eat. Oh, really? Did you ever take home any of the stuff that was left over? Mm -mm. I'd remembered Albert Wharton was telling me he did, but he said a lot of that stuff he didn't care for too mm -hmm. much. <laughs> yeah. So when you were, um, I know for a short time, you and you and your wife was- Ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know for a short time you and your wife were um, living up here at the house. 
me and my, this wife, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, were any of the children at home then? Yeah. Uh-huh. Charles was there. Uh-huh. And uh, Jay and Bruce was there part of the time. Right. That was Mr. Babcock's brother's boys. Uh-huh. You know, after they died, after their parents died, they uh, brought those boys down here. Uh-huh. They was there for a while, not too long. Uh-huh. And uh, Charles was there. Uh-huh. What did you think of the kids? Whose kids? The, well, the Babcock's kids. Did you see them very often? You mean when we was living up there? Right. Not too much. You see, they're all married then. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, they wasn't all married, but Betsy and uh, Barbara got married while we was up there. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Catherine got married, but we wasn't living up there, I don't think then. But we were living up there when Betsy and Barbara got married. Uh Uh-huh. And Betsy got married in the house? No, she got married. I believe Betsy got married over here to Renola Church. Uh Uh-huh. I believe. But Mary Catherine got married. Mary Catherine got married up there. And there was another wedding. Yeah, Barbara. Barbara's got married up here at the house. No, I think Barbara got married over sitting there at church. But had to all the reception of the receptions here. That's right. Wow. I think that's right. Uh-huh. Did you when you were living here, not just up at the house, but when you were down here too, did you get to know the children? Oh of the yeah. Babcocks? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. What what kind how would you sort of see them during the day? What Well, they would be out when they were at that time, they would only come down here probably Easter and Christmas. Uh huh. Then that house up there stood up there empty. Right. Uh huh. Well, when they'd come down here like that, they had a a watchman with stayed with the nurses. Uh huh. And they had a couple of ponies up here, and they'd get. Those ponies hooked up to the cart and ride around in the village here. Uh huh. Or they'd take a stroll, walking or riding bicycle. Uh huh. And they would, they would stop and talk to any children. You wouldn't know there was Babcock children uh-huh. if you saw them. Uh huh. They'd all for friendly. Uh huh. And then after, after they got up a little bigger, the done away with the nurses and they'd come down here and uh, sometime Miss Babcock would call for one of my daughters to come up there and sit with them or stay with them for a while. Uh-huh. Was your daughter their age or was she older? No, they are about the same age. Frances and Mary Catherine was about the same age. Uh-huh. Did they? Did your children like going up and um, playing with them and being with them? Yeah, they they just uh-huh. they're just like any other family. Right. That's uh-huh. why it seemed like like a big family. They uh-huh. they wasn't you wouldn't know if was that type of people. Uh huh. That's neat. What kinds of things would your children do? for recreation around um, Ronalda? Well, they're just like you and all of the children. <laughs> they had a lot of friends that they visit, and uh-huh. they, you know, just like any other family. Uh-huh. Would they go swimming at the pool, any? Yeah, or uh-huh. the outside pool. The outside yeah. pool. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, did they ever learn to play golf? Did they ever play golf? Mm-mm. No. Never did. None of them never played golf. Uh-huh. I think that's neat that the men here had all those sports 
it was the men that worked on the place. They had a polo team, mm -hmm. right? And uh, a golf place. I don't know, remember now whether there's anybody that actually worked here that played polo or not. I, uh -huh. I don't remember. But uh, but the people in town here that belonged to it, uh -huh. they did play polo. Uh -huh. But I don't know was one of the, was any of the men that actually worked at, for Renola. I don't remember whether they ever played polo. Or but not. they did play golf. Yeah. The men that worked yeah. here. Uh huh. Huh. I've never I have never ever seen a polo game. Have you seen one? Yeah, I've seen them. Uh huh. What what is it like? Well, it's sort of like a soccer, uh -huh. except they're riding horses, uh -huh. and uh, you got a mallet down here, and they hit that ball and try to make it through the goal post uh -huh. on the horse. Uh -huh. It's sort of a dangerous game, I think. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. But you have gone up to see him play? Mm hmm? You had gone up to see him play, son? Oh, I'd go over there sometimes, see him play if I was around here. Uh huh. But I didn't care nothing for it. Right. Didn't care. I wouldn't go from here to the road to see us. <laughs> but you know, it's a good crowd. Uh huh. Like everything else. Uh, what kind of people would turn out to watch polo? I guess most of just like anybody would turn out to see a ball game. Uh huh. It's all different mixtures of people. Sort of expensive game. Yeah. Sort of like golf. Um, yeah. You've got to keep up those horses, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. I bet it is. Would, uh, were there horses kept on the place then, on Winolda? They was kept over there. Uh-huh. They had a big barn down there. Uh-huh. And would they just run the stables and people in town would keep their horses there? Mm-hmm. Did Renolda itself have any horses at that time? I don't know whether she did or not. Uh-huh. I don't know. I... See, that's been a long time ago. Yeah. But they had a big barn down there and had a man to look after them. Of course, they'd bring some in here from other places. So, so like doing a horse show, you know. Right. They'd bring them in here and carry them back home. Uh-huh. But they kept a lot of them over there. I wanted to ask you some questions about um, what sort of was your philosophy about raising your kids? How did you raise your kids? Like, um, who gave the discipline in your family? Who did what? How did you? How do you? How did you raise your your own children? Well, I just raised them best I could. <laughs> did you raise them the way you were raised? No. No. What was the difference? Well, they had more opportunity than I ever had. Uh-huh. That's, that's the only difference I know. Uh-huh. Do you think that was good? I don't know. I wonder sometimes. Uh-huh. I wonder. Of course, my grandchildren being raised different from what my children were. Uh-huh. How? Time changes, you know. Right. How are they being raised now, your grandchildren? Well, they got, they've got much more than my children had. Uh huh. Sometimes I think they got too much. Uh huh. They don't appreciate it. Uh huh. Not only mine, but the whole country. Uh huh. Did you discipline your children the way you were disciplined? Yeah, I tried to be. Uh huh. Were you as strict, or were you less strict? 
Um, wish you hadn't asked me that. <laughs> I don't recognize less. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It, it keeps getting less every right. generation. Right. Who would do the disciplining in your family? Well, whichever one saw the mistake. <laughs> Either you or your wife? Yeah. Uh-huh. Would your wife ever refer some of them to you for punishment? Or you to her? No, no, I don't remember. You took sort of equal turns at it? Mm -hmm. You took equal turns at mm -hmm. it? Whoever saw the mistake uh -huh. that they made, we tried to correct <laughs> I just wondered, because sometimes I know my mother's a pushover. <laughs> and you can get away with some things with her that you can't get away with with my father. So I just wondered if that was the same way. But you both kept about equal rules. Mm -hmm. What kind of rules would you put on your children? when they were growing up, things that they could do and couldn't do. About what? What kind of rules would you have for your children when they were growing up? Like what things could they do and what things couldn't they do? Well, I tried to, to teach them to be in the right company. Uh-huh. And I set a time for them to be in at night. Right. And that's about all. Rest at Carrollton Church mm -hmm. and sent them to school mm -hmm. and with all our combined I think I've done a pretty good job. Uh -huh. What when you were growing up, what kind of rules when you were growing up when you were a child, what kind of rules did you have? Well, I had about the same rules. Uh-huh. To always respect the older persons. Uh-huh. And never stick my nose to other people's business. Uh-huh. And never take anything that didn't belong to me. Uh-huh. And to treat my fellow man like I like him to treat me. And that stuck with me. Uh huh. It's a good rules to live by. Did um, 